Hi, I'm Josiah. And I'm Elizabeth. And this is Worth Watching. I think there's something wrong with Elizabeth. 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 Hello and welcome to this episode of Worth Watching. Today we are reviewing Deliver Us From Evil. Alright, so this movie is loosely based on a true story about a police sergeant played in this movie by Eric Bana, who is investigating a series of strange and violent crimes with sort of a supernatural undertone to them, and he's joined by a Jesuit exorcist priest played by Edgar Ramirez, and they try to figure out essentially if these are just simply violent crimes committed by the insane, or if there's something more going on under the surface. So I really like this movie because I really like police kind of drama, like shows and things like that, and scary movies, and so it was kind of combined together, and I hadn't really seen like exorcist kind of scary movies before, and I thought this was really good. I liked the concept of the movie, I liked what they were trying to do with it, but I really didn't think that they blended the two very well, and I thought it didn't have enough strong characters and enough strong enough like driving plot to warrant being a good police drama. I didn't think it was scary enough and consistently scary enough uh, to warrant being like a good horror exorcist film. So I felt like it kind of just, you kind of got a mediocre middle of the road combination of the two. I was actually really looking forward to this movie going into it because I really like Eric Bana and I really like Edgar Ramirez. I know they're both great actors. I was actually fairly disappointed by Eric Bana in this movie. He just did not seem to really be into his role and had kind of stiff acting and his dialogue didn't help because a lot of the dialogue is very cliched and stuff that you hear in a lot of really stereotypical police drama stuff. But on the other hand, Edgar Ramirez I thought really shined in his role as the Jesuit priest in this movie. He's a very unique character who you don't see a lot of other characters like from other movies. Um, like, he is not your average Jesuit priest. His character is introduced with him doing pull-ups and then drinking a double shot of jo Johnny Walker. So, you know, he's he's a very interesting character and he's really fun to watch and just brings a really great intensity and a real world sort of grittiness to the role that he has. Speaking of gritty, this movie was beyond. It was, the gory parts were the best parts. Like, the jump scares and things like that weren't Right. Normally, scary movies, that's like the best part where you just jump, but the gore in this movie was really what made it scary. Yeah, and that's and that's the thing that surprised me, was that because there were a lot of other mo areas where this movie didn't do too well, but the, like, the makeup and violent effects and stuff were done really, really well and were really disturbing and hard to watch at points where you just want to look away because there's just graphically violent, gross things happening on screen that were really unnerving. And I'm really a person who is not a fan of a horror movie that just bases itself off of jump scares, and I thought this movie had far too many jump scares, and they were all set up exactly the same way, where stuff would get really quiet, and then suddenly something would happen, and it was something popping in front of the screen and stuff, and that happened about seven or eight times in this movie. Or more than that. Um, and whereas, you know, uh, I, I've seen this director direct other movies, you know, I've seen, uh, you know, Sinister and The Exorcism of Emily Rose, both of which I thought were better than this movie, particularly Sinister, um, there are hardly any jump scares in Sinister, and when there are, they're really frightening because they've been set up over the course of like a five or six minute long scene where they've just built this really creepy atmosphere and stuff is going on. And this movie, I felt, didn't really ever try to build a super creepy atmosphere, and when it did, it didn't do it for a really long time and kind of just let things hang off after that rather than capitalizing on the suspense that it had you in. So I felt this movie just didn't feel as well put together as a scary movie as something like Sinister did. And it was progressive, like the beginning wasn't very good, but as mm. it got farther along in the end, they stopped doing like the jump scares, which they only right. did in the beginning. Yeah. It got better and scarier as you went on. Yeah, and, and the dialogue was cheesiest at the beginning of the movie, and there was stuff, you know, that wasn't as good at the beginning. And about the two-thirds mark in this movie, there's some really great stuff that happens and some really well set up scenes. Um, so as a whole, the movie's not a total waste uh, by any means, it's just there are parts that are kind of a messy feeling. So with that in mind, on a scale of A through F, what would you rate this movie? I'd have to give this movie a B because I really enjoyed it. It was scary at the end for me, and I like scary movies, and I thought it was good. I'd go see it again. I'm going to give it a low C. Honestly, I was kind of disappointed by this movie. I was really looking forward to it. I liked the director. I liked the other stuff he's done. But I didn't think this movie was as original or felt as real as his other movies did, and it just didn't stick with me. I didn't find it as lastingly frightening as his other movies were. Thanks for watching this episode of Worth Watching. Remember to like the video if you liked it, comment down below on your favorite exorcism movie of all time, and of course, subscribe if you want to see more.